and now for something, as they say, completely different. Um, I was asked to talk about um, types of Christian theology for the 21st century, so I decided to do this instead, or as well. Um, this is the title, I'll explain it in just a minute and I'll give you a picture to look at. Um, I'm going to give a bit of an account of what I think Fry might be trying to do in the typology in types of Christian theology. Um, and then I'm going to use the story of Jacob's wrestling at the Jabbok crossing um, as, a, as, a, as a starting, as a thinking around, uh, yeah, to identify um, what I'm suggesting are five interrelated dynamics of Christian theology particularly relevant to thinking about where we are in the 21st century. And what was previously part three, I've hastily relabeled as a bonus track, meaning I'll do it if we get that far, which is to think beyond the five dynamics about the, the subject of theology. And this is, um, this is what, um, it's my favorite picture of Jacob wrestling with the angel, it, and it's in the, um, it's in the National Gallery of, of Scotland, very near where I work. But um, sometimes when I show it, people really get put off by it, so I won't leave it on the screen all the time, but there you are. Um, we're going to talk about Fry first anyways. So, as, as um, we're all very well aware, in the lectures um, collected in types of Christian theology, um, Hans Fry proposes five ways in which Christian theology performs the relationship between, on the one hand, particular Christian narratives and claims, and on the other hand, concerns questions and claims that are taken to be of general or universal human significance. And alongside and associated with the intellectual and conceptual diagramming of theological work, there are important implications, which Fry and his interpreters explore, for questions of theology's institutional location and allegiances. Um, and um, perhaps like all typologies that prove to have staying power, types, as the set of lectures, um, combines a kind of intuitive plausibility, at least for those who share something of Fry's context and assumptions, with considerable provocation, right? There's something about how the picture in types very quickly captivates, even if it doesn't quite, like Wittgenstein says, hold us captive. It provides a way of looking at or imagining the field with enough ambiguity or incongruence or dissonance to force the reader to keep looking more closely. I'm focusing on a few features of that here. Um, various appreciative and critical reviews of types at the time drew attention to the tension between, on the one hand, thick description of particular theologies, and we've kept on talking about Fry's love of description, uh, on the one hand, and on the other hand, the formal or even one-dimensional description required to organise them into positions on a line, right? So there's this sense that the more substance we give to any of the types, or the more we develop actually existing historical examples of theology, the harder it becomes to actually care about the line along which they're all notionally organised. Um, but it seems to me it's wrong to reduce that tension to yet another binary, right? Either you're doing thick description or you're abstracting for the sake of the diagram, because the very intuitive plausibility of the exercise relies on the sense that there are, as a matter of historical experience, types in Christian theology, right? There are clusters of characteristics that generally belong together and sets of questions such that the answer to one often predicts the answers to the other. And that being so, um, we should probably ask, or I want to ask, um, not whether thick description is better than one-dimensional diagramming, but rather what each was able to achieve in the context in which Fry wrote. The abstraction used to, used to produce a typology, no less than the thick description, is an artifact of its time. Right? The abstraction is an artifact of its time. It's a tailored intervention in a particular moment of the history of the discipline. And more importantly, this is the key point, I think, it's done in the service of... Um, imagining otherwise, so not only seeing our present situation differently, but opening up paths to its, fu its future. This is what I suggest typology might be for. Um, so I'm comparing it here to the, the way that Peter Oakes, um, who's been mentioned a few times here, describes diagramming um, as an interruption of some known practice in order to communicate the real possibility of that practice in terms that at least some sceptical questioners can relate to. 
So the, uh, the thought here, I suppose, is that Fry's not trying to give, in, when he writes about Bart, or in types at least, he's not trying to give a full account of how Bart does theology. He's trying to show readers that on some specified set of terms, Bart has a viable theological project. Um, and thereby to enable imaginings of other kinds of theological projects that might be doable in this space. Right? That's, that's my thought. Um, so a word about what the diagram looks like. Um, it is rather misleading to say, as I've sometimes heard, that Fry works with a spectrum or a continuum. Now, I had quite a lot of discussions about this with my husband, who is an experimental physicist, and I kept trying to describe this picture to him and say, what would you call this, what would you call this? And he gave me that it's domains, domains on an axis. Um, presumably, the whole point of identifying five and only five types and arguing, as folk did, about who belongs in each one, is that they're at least in principle discontinuous, if contiguous, right? So there's some sort of qualitative difference, um, a jump between the types. Um, but the key point that interests me is actually the idea that, as far as I can make out in, in, in types, they, between them, they occupy the whole of an axis. And there's something about how we grasp Fry's vision of the key challenge confronting theology in his day as a single ever-present tension constantly reappearing in different guises which could be creatively negotiated but never escaped and which appeared to allow in some ways limited room for manoeuvre or could feel like it allowed relatively limited room for manoeuvre. That one to and fro tussle, religious, secular, church, academy. So the key background fact shaping this challenge in types, as Fry describes it himself, is the transition from, on the one hand, Christianity. So on the one hand, Christianity as significantly and unproblematically determinative of the horizon of inquiry in many parts of this cultural space. So this is a historical transition. So you start from this place where Christianity is determinative of the horizon of inquiry to, on, to the future, right? Um, Christianity as one among many religions in a cultural horizon, which is still in many ways shaped by Christianity, but he's not going to acknowledge that fact as having anything other than historical relevance. So it's the transition of Christianity to being, uh, as a word the default setting, to being one among many religions in a secular space. Right? That's the historically specific and local predicament with which I'm suggesting Fry lived, and, and that's not an original suggestion particularly. And by filling this one axis with the five types, while also providing multi-dimensional descriptions of at least some real theologians, he was able to demonstrate that theology could flourish in this situation without denying the predicament. So you named the predicament that you said. There's some imaginative possibility that we could do theology in this space. Of course, I explicitly noted that um, and this is important to me as well, he explicitly noted that very different ways of locating theology in relation to the academy, the church, and what they represent might arise outside his Western European North American frame of reference. And by doing so, he implicitly notes that at another time and space, that might not even be the polarity that matters most. Now, um, uh, Fry's typology has been, has, 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 has been quite long-lived. It's been repurposed in very different contexts. Um, I've seen it used um, very recently for, in, in a really interesting remapping of, of certain debates within Islamic theology. Um, but anyway, I, what I've tried to do here, kind of hopefully without too many people noticing the sleight of hand, um, is give myself license not only to update and further thicken the thick description, but also to propose a different kind of diagramming process based on what one thinks 21st century theology needs. Right? What's the predicament, as it were, of 21st century theology that we're trying to imagine our way out of? Um, so what real possibilities are we aiming to reveal? Um, don't propose, don't pl um, promise to have solved that, but my assumption is rather that 21st, theology is 21st century theology is operating in an expanding pluralizing and possibly fragmenting space. One that would, I want to say, so I'm disagreeing with David Ford here, I want to say would not be particularly well served by Fry's model of a single axis with its strength in the center and its weakness at the peripheries. Sorry, that was you wanted the diagram back there. With its strength in the center and its weakness at the peripheries. Um, it works as that kind of tailored intervention. I want to think about different possible ones. Um, so, what I actually would like to do, 
um, in the longer paper that this is part of, is um, take up, actually take up one of the, the most striking things that Fry's typology does and almost make that the main event. Because one of the interesting things that happens with, when, with Fry's typology, I've suggested, is it, um, it, it signals multiplicity without fag fragmentation. And um, it turns strangers into neighbors. And those are two things I think we kind of need to do in 21st century theology as well. Just to ex I'm going to grab my water. Give me a sec. Excuse me. It is water, honest. Um, <laughs> um, just to expand that point further a little bit, I begin by noting one of Fry's very few mentions in types in the lectures of theology beyond Western Europe and North America. Um, there's this moment where he suddenly suggests that Latin American liberation theology, about which he's elsewhere got quite a lot of critical stuff to say, right, and US conservative evangelical theology in this context, offer similar challenges to theology settlement with a liberal university by trying to restore theology to its proper home in the community with the faith, faith of the faithful. It's this fascinating moment because it's a really striking example of how Fry's typological kind of work offers some surprising juxtapositions, points of contact, that are clearly going to be points of controversy, but that don't, at least don't preclude mutual recognition or fruitful interaction. Um, and that's a feature noted by successive readers in Fry's treatment of the theologians he discusses at both length, most length, and most famously, of course, that's Barton Schleiermacher. And they end up, instead of opposite sides, throwing stuff at each other, happily located in adjacent domains and maybe even crossing the border a wee bit, right? Um, so there's this point that on the one hand, Fry's types allows us to recognize the integrity of genuinely different approaches to theology. And on the other hand, and perhaps more important, even more importantly for contemporary purposes, it places those different approaches in relation one to another. And indeed, it's noteworthy that the five types of theology are themselves already relationally defined. They are negotiations or interactions between two different conversations or communities or two different views of theology, Fry suggests at one point. And moreover, within the wider cultural horizon of the end of Christian cultural hegemony, all of the viable types present possible future ways of being one community among others or one mode of academic discourse among others. And I've suggested that 21st century theology is marked by expansion, pluralization, fragmentation. And in this context, I suggest that theological description and diagramming for the 21st century needs to follow Fry's lead in a key respect by seeking to facilitate, in Willie Jennings' terms, Willie Jennings turning up again, the joining of different particulars. Um, what I try to do in the longer version of the paper, and I'll give you a wee bit of it now, um, is use I do this by thinking about dynamics in theology rather than dynamics or types of activity rather than domains. Um, because it seems to be one of the features of now, 21st century, is that the critical re-evaluation of past theological practice that has done so much to shape the current theological map. Um, so thinking about what voices have been listened to, what voices have been excluded, what kinds of um, uh, disciplinary conversations have been relevant, what have not, you know, the critical thinking about a bunch of previously taken for granted stuff has raised more clearly and explicitly than was perhaps the case in the past, the question of what theology is doing or what theologians are trying to do. Um, partly what power or influence is exercised and to what end, but also what motivates or animates a particular theological debate, what genres or forms counters theology, and also what the mission or vocation of the theologian in a particular time or place might be. I mean, what is going on? That's an Eberism, isn't it? H it's an Eberism. What is going on here? What is going on in the doing of theology? Right. Um, and it also seems to be uh, without for a moment underestimating the continuing institutional power and accumulated capital of Christian theology, that in many, it's, uh, in many of the contexts in which it is done, there are still multiple and varied pressures on theologian to give, theologians to give us account, an account of what our point is. Um, in a way that's by no means limited to the sorts of questions about academic rigor and integrity that might be answered to a greater or lesser extent on the basis of Fry's typology. One doesn't, even need, one doesn't just need to justify now why is theology an academically um, okay um, uh, pursuit. One also needs to, we're talking about future of the humanities a minute ago, so well, why is it, why it is even worthwhile? Yeah, what's even the point? And this, 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 this should not be ignored, right? Okay, so I'm going to have... 
help. How am I doing? Okay, I'm going to have a go at um, five um, dynamics of 21st century theology, loosely drawn from the story of Jacob at the Jabbok Ford. Um, the choice of narrative, of course, while not of Jacob at Jabbok, it's, it's not the only one possible, but it's not entirely arbitrary because Jacob wrestling with the angel does appear from time to time in the pages of theolo theological writings as an image of what, what theologians are, are, are doing. Um, and the dynamics I'm discussing, I've, got, I've listed them, they're wrestling with the given and asking the name, which are my two that are a remix of the two approaches to theology within, between which Fry sets out his five types. So he's got them as sort of poles with your axis and the domains, and I've got them as, as dynamics within a theological um, practice. Um, and then I've got some more. I've got demanding a blessing, following the community and crossing the border. And I think that's the order they're in in the paper. But let's see how we go. Wrestling so wrestling with the given is my label for engagement with the complex specifics, especially the, <laughs> the cultural linguistic specifics of Christian scripture and traditions, deliberately with a small t and a small s. Yeah. One might think that this, if it, was, it was, if it was groups of theologians, you'd say, well, this is your post-liberal stuff, right? This is a, covers a large swathe of the post-liberal tradition of theology that comes most directly after Fry, that embraces his prioritization of the identity of Jesus Christ as conveyed in the biblical text, the internal coherence, as well as the ongoing generativity of Christian speech, and the responsibility of the theologian to the literal sense of the text. Um, and this, this, this sense of givenness, beginning in the middle of things, um, relying on testimony, always having to reckon anew with the given just because it is given as encounter with God's presence, um, is easy enough to identify all over right, late 20th and early 21st century theology in multiple strands of resourcement and rediscovery of tradition as much as in the rereading of scripture. Um, I do want to ask a bit more widely what the crucial given might be in each theological project, what in each case the central res is <laughs> for theology's beginning in media res, and how theologians hold themselves to it, and the sense that that's always a question worth asking about what's going on in a theological project. In each case, um, where he's got encountered, on what specific given material should our reasoning about God do its work? And theologians that would never, theologies that would never be labelled post-liberal or orthodox with a small, small O or whatever, we'll have some response to that question. So I've got examples in contemporary theolo theology. We find, for example, that wrestling with the given can be done in the mode of theological reserve or rigorous apophaticism, taking part of the given to be the mysterious, the apoetic, or the unsayable. We might find, look at multiple examples of theological work that seeks particular fidelity to particular histories or faith, a faithful struggle, struggle faith under duress, um, like... Andrew Prevost's stuff on uh, where he centers a theological account of prayer and beyond that around the specificities of the prayer life of enslaved Africans, which becomes the given um, point of encounter with God from which, with which he, he feels himself he is obliged as a theologian to, to, to wrestle. Um, you've moreover a wide range of philosophical and other scholarly methods um, uh, borrowed and put to work in theology may facilitate wrestling with the given from the application of contemporary analytic philosophy to the task of explicating the core claims of Christian doctrines as they are conveyed in the tradition, hmm, the analytic theology people, to the equally rigorous use of ethnography and autoethnography to facilitate ever closer attention to the life and transformational faith of a particular Christian congregation. All right. That's my first dynamic. Um, I'm, am I being dynamic enough? Right. I will be a little bit more dynamic and give you at least a taste of some more. Right. Second dynamic, asking the name. It refers to that point in the story of Jacob's wrestling when he, as it were, interrupts the, str with the struggle with this body of present material to ask what is going on. In a bigger sense, what's going on? Theology asks, to a greater or lesser extent, about the meaning, truthfulness, reliability, perhaps the being or nature of the tradition given beyond the unquestionable continuing fact that it encounters and places very particular and unique demands on me. Uh, ask the bigger question. More precisely, I would say, the theologian asks the questions that might be put in comparable or analogous situations and that relate the particularity of the given to other actual or possible givens. In many cases, perhaps the paradigm cases, asking the name, as I've put it here, would be about recognizing the philosophical questions that follow in the wake of theological claims. Right. 
Um, I'm just trying to reframe it to avoid any suggestion that reading the Bible and doing philosophy constitutes a zero-sum game, and I'm looking at the wonderful Kate Sonderegger as one of the <laughs> my exemplars of, of, of how these things are not um, uh, very, very much not dynamics in opposition, um, but it's possible to do um, full-on metaphysics and full-on biblical interpretation as one thing. Um, but then it would, but this, it's, one might find something similar, something equally to the fore in, say, the extensive engagement in African theology and theological ethics with the questions around personhood, relation and identity that arise at the intersections of Ubuntu philosophy, Trinitarian doctrine and theological anthropology, right? So this is the, 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 the analogous questions that co connect, compare and fit in. And those are, so that's my remix of, of, of two poles, right, help. How many minutes have I got? Just be honest with me, please. Okay, really? You're lying. Okay. Um, we've only done two. I'm getting there. Um, following the community, this has me playing a little bit fast and loose with the biblical source, but, but there is this... You know, J Jacob's not out on his own, right? And there is, there is, there is, a, there is a significant community of accountability. Uh, a community that it can't and won't go away from, right? There's clearly a sense in that text of communal, communal responsibility and indeed representation. And this is a core issue, of course, for contemporary, for 21st century theological work. I always like Isasi Diaz's um, way of framing the issue in terms of a the theologian's communities of accountability. Um, one might say, thinking back to five, five types, that it's even possible to re-describe them by his types, I mean, in terms of your basic communities of accountability, as church as a community of accountability, the academy as a community of accountability. But um, it's important to note, uh, the reason I want, it's, it's actually Diaz's way of thinking about it, maybe rather than Tracy's, um, is um, that it's not simply the community to whom this has to make intellectual sense. This came up in v Victor's question earlier. It's also the community whose lives set the theological agenda. It's not, in other words, a substitute for a language or a set of rules of discourse. It implies attention to ways of life more broadly, as indeed Fry already suggests it is account of the institutional histories of theology. Um, want to note here that everyone speaks from somewhere, we're all used to that, it's all, all contextual, but a distinctive dynamic is set up within a theological project where the theologian thematizes and locates a community of accountability and this is the case whether the community in question is minoritized or not. And um, I'd want to note in that point that explicit confessional or denominational location is one but clearly not the only way of defining, that's our church is special, one but clearly not the only way of defining a community to which the theology might become and might be accountable. And to my mind, this would be another paper, but although confessional particularity is often diff treated differently in theology from other types of particularity, you seem to be able to get away with being a, uh, you know, a, a Lutheran theologian or a Catholic theologian or whatever without being called a contextual theologian on that account, but that just strikes me as odd. Um, it, it, it just makes limited sense to draw clear lines between confessional or denominational belonging and other kinds of communal belonging around which individual claims of identity might be shaped, but that would probably be another discussion. Um, demanding a blessing points, this is one for you David, points to theological engagement with the needs, concerns and desires emerging in a particular time and place and I, I want to dis distinguish that from the idea of being accountable to a community even though you get these sort of influential informal cartographies that lumps all of this together under contextual or applied with a view to keeping them carefully separated from pure systematics and I'm just trying to mi mix it up. But it's, this, this isn't about community. So, so if you consider for the wealth of theological work emerging from reflection on the many dimensions of the environmental crisis, from multiple geographical and confessional locations, and within the wider global horizon that the subject matter necessitates, that would be a good example of the kind of thing I'm talking about. Though it's not necessarily just ethics and politics, I'd suggest that the flourishing in our day of science-engaged theology um, reflects, among other things, a comparable move to theologize from the needs and the open questions of a science-dominated and science-anxious age. Um, so, and just to make the point that to demand a blessing is not to demand that a gap be filled, so it's not that the shape of the theological work is determined by the pre-existing question. Um, it's more about hearing, voicing, and responding to what David Ford refers to as cries, the existentially affecting demands for response 
in a particular time and place that are not even fully formed questions. And in all that, it's very important for 21st century theology to remember that Christianity and Christian theology can also be, is quite likely to be, a background cause of the cry, part of the problem. And that might need to be directly reckoned with. Um, the final dynamic to which I draw attention here is crossing the border. We're still, still on the Jabak, right? Um, as I noted above, size types are in fact types of relationship or encounter between at least two views of theology. And the negativity to the point of caricature about those who place us at the end of the spectrum has proved controversial. Um, but if we bracket the question of whether any real theologian actually falls into one of those, the key message might be that the failure to recognize rep relationship across difference is a failure to do effective Christian theology. Um, and we know that you scan the horizon of contemporary theology, we find an immense range and depth of intellectual relationships. Um, theologian citations, if nothing else, reflect their constant reaching across disciplinary, cultural, contextual, class, or confessional boundaries. And those aren't, as it were, only cross-border raids. They're serious, informed, and informing encounters. And my argument is that that's a core practice rather than a marginal distraction and a strength rather than a weakness, which is explicitly not to say that all theology needs to be interdisciplinary, diasporic, cross-cultural, ecumenical, or whatever other adjective singles another set of borders to be crossed. It's more that in practice and in history, Christian theology has been formed in dialogue, not only asserting a preformed identity over against another, but rather discovering and shaping an identity through the negotiation of difference. Um, and that becomes clear even in Fry's account of how the present character of Christian theology in the North and West, even the most church-focused theology, emerges from debates about the place of theology among academic disciplines in the University of Berlin. So I guess my claim here is that Christian theology as a practice is itself re relationally constituted. And theolo theologians cross the border by naming, reworking, and remaking the relationships that make Christian theology what it is. And the transformation and rethinking of Christianity's relations to Judaism is one of the key examples that's been discussed already today. There's something about how effective theology entails discovering how the relation to the other is partly constitutive of the self. And in the biblical narrative on which I focus, Jacob himself as a character is, of course, rather conspicuously marked as relational all the way down because he's a, he's a younger twin who came into the world clinging to his brother. And, <laughs> and that's, that, that's, that's just who he is. That's how he's, how he's made. Um, I, I think I, I want to stop here. I have, the, 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 the coda would say a lot more about, Jacob, about Jacob's wound right, and about the self-involving and self-risking practices of theology um, and also something about a change of name um, and the ways in which uh, uh, th doing theology is both um, uh, claiming a particular place in the world and for certain purposes and at certain times being uh, able to sit lighter to that particular place and identity. But maybe we can talk more about that either in the questions or, or later. Thank you all for staying awake, if you did. Thank you so much, Rachel. I'm really sorry to ask another question. I feel a bit guilty, but I couldn't help it. Um, I'm wondering whether how you would position your own um, mapping out of these dynamics um, in terms of one of the dynamics, because presumably one can't do this from nowhere, and so yeah. you're doing a kind of theology here. Yeah. Um, and having chosen to um, get it from this particular story, yeah. it's really fascinating, and I'm wondering how that, yeah, how that spins, how you do the whole um, mapping. Yeah. That's, thanks, that's, that's really interesting. I'm, hmm, I mean, yeah, I, 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 probably, I probably could map it out. If I want to say something about where, yeah, okay, I mean, I guess if I want to think honestly about something like communities of accountability, for example, I, I would have to say something about having had my entire way of thinking as a theologian upended by doing World Council of Churches, Faith and Order stuff and realizing I came from a tiny little island on the edge of the world and this is where, you know, the, the global center of gravity of Christianity is somewhere else entirely. And in fact, um, 
would, would, would just need a way of thinking theologically that will be honest about um, the locatedness of all theological projects in a broken body. The, the way that the full version of this paper ends, it's, in, it, it's theology from a broken body, from part of a broken body, right? Um, and, 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 but but and that, 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 it's not just relationships, that it's broken relationships, as it were, broken global relationships that form of identities as theologians all the way down. Um, so that, 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 that would be one, one part of what, 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 I'm, what, I'm, what I'm doing. And so there's, there's, a, sense of, there's a sense of accountability to, to ecumenical work, but, 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 but ecumenical work in a in an oikumene kind of way, yeah, so, so with a strong justice, peace, integrity of creation kind of, kind of frame, yeah. Um, and, 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 and also, um, I suppose, a sense of the, the, the if, you, if you want to talk about, I mean, the demanding of blessings, the one, one, one I care most about, because there's this, 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 this sense of theology itself as a, um, of, of, of faith-seeking understanding as a, a faith-seeking understanding, not just as, oh, well, I wonder how this works, but as a, I need this to work, I need this to make sense, because so much has stopped making sense, right? and things have stopped connecting. Yeah, sorry, is that any help? I don't think, I don't think I'm really answering, answering the question, but I suppose I'm, I'm maybe trying to say something about um, a, a, a particular location in, in the 21st century. But maybe, I mean, here's another thing, I actually, if I want to bring it back to Fry, the types, Types of Christian theology, the, the, those lectures where he sets out the types. Is he doing theology at that point, actually? And am I doing theology here? I'm not totally sure. I'm not sure about the answer to either of those questions. So maybe we're both copping out a bit, right? Maybe we're both um, planning a project rather than doing a project, and maybe... Maybe that's just where we're, maybe that's worthwhile, right? I mean, not everybody has to be doing theology all the time, right? <laughs> so, so that's actually a genuine question. I mean, I'd be interested to know what others think, whether, whether the typology is itself, a, is itself a theology. One of the really interesting things about the way that you've um, developed this is it's out of a particular story and the way that you've articulated each um, dimension seems very firmly grounded in a sense of what it is to be in a community and in a place. Um, and what concretized this question was your question, are you doing theology here? Mm. Um, do you have a sense of what it would look like to try and think similar categories to this from different stories and different places that nonetheless intersect and the follow-up, which might seem very incongruous, does your thinking on that question impact your sense of whether or not you're doing theology here? Okay, yes. I, I, think, I think, I'm, think I'm starting to see what... I think I'm seeing what you're getting at, though it's well past midnight in my time, so I may actually be just missing more beats than I would normally miss, for which I apologise. Um, like, I sometimes know what I'm talking about, but maybe not now. <laughs> um, have I thought about it in relation to other narratives? No, I could try. Um, I, I, I mean, I mean on, so, on, on, on some level, I, I, I want to because I don't, because, because there's something you know, inherently unsatisfactory, but say this is something weirdly arbitrary. You know, why, 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 why pick this? Why do, why do, why do this? Um, I, no, I did. I got, I got a similar question um, when I tried when I tried this material out, and um, I realised I actually, in some ways, I quite liked the. Well, you know, Jacob's just this guy, right, and not the most heroic guy we we got. Yeah, but the theologian's just this guy or girl, right? And and and, and we're actually not, you know, the heroes of the whole thing. And, and, and there is something about just saying, well, we, we're allowed to be just a sort of random marginal character and this is a little incident. Yes, yeah, somebody pointed out that, this, that the, one of the odd things about this story is it, you know, it happens, but it hasn't actually changed. I mean, in the one hand, it's hugely significant with Jacob's life story because he gets a wound and a name and all of this stuff. But actually, most of you, you, your narrative can manage without it. Um, it, it, it it's, it's not a... It's not a 
it's, it's, it's not a shifting of the tectonic plates of the story. Um, and I thought, so we, which in some ways makes it an odd one to pick, but then in other ways makes you, well, um, it, 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 it's, there's, a, there's a kind of sense, a realistic sense, if you like, there, that, well, doing theology is just one thing that people do, right? Um, so I don't, know, I don't know if that, that doesn't help answer your second question, because your second question was, is what's being done here theology? I mean, I think, I, I think, I think there's a, shed load of theological assumptions in what I'm doing. So you could say to that extent, I'm doing theology, right? Because you could poke at any of them and say, well, you know, what the heck, right? Sure, you know. I mean, are, are you really equating, um, you know, the scripture and the, 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 the ecumenical councils with um, the, 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 the material that's studied in an ethnographic reading of a particular Christian con congregation? I mean, come off it. I mean, you, you could, you could, you could, uh, you could unpit that. I've put, put in a lot of, 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 of theological um, uh, background assumptions there. Um, so I suppose to that extent, it, it's, it's, it is a theolog it's a theological exercise. But then maybe that's, you know, this would presumably, uh, you know, and this is why it was, it was helpful to, to listen to George because um, that um, fleshes out the you know, the, the, the really significant weight, the, 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 the Christological weight particularly, that's been uh, brought in all around the, what, what, what looks on the face of it like it could be a fairly formal characterization um, uh, in, in types. So, so, yeah, maybe I've talked myself into we're both doing theology. <laughs> R Rachel, you are co-editing the fourth edition of the Modern Theologians. Am I? Yes. Well, never knew. And, and, <laughs> uh, and the first three editions uh, had, Hans, Hans, them, Hans, had Hans Fry's five types as the structuring of, in a sense, the yeah. whole thing, you yeah. know, and certainly the introduction. How has all this affected, A, how you've chosen mm. theologies for the fourth edition, yeah. the, uh, you know, and, and divided them up, and yeah. secondly, how are you going to introduce them? Um, yeah, I mean, wait for yeah, wait for the, buy the book, book available soon in all good bookshops. I mean, it did. This is that's not the actual sequence of events, but it turns out to fit quite nicely because actually, what we've got in the new edition um, is uh, uh, yeah, we 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 we've in, in, I mean, the, your first the fir the first two are not. I mean, oddly, my, fir my first two, I would say, they're, 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 they're kind of all over the, all the, always there and they're cross-cutting. But my, my, next, my next three, my, my communities and, 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 and demanding a blessing and, and, and crossing the border, definitely do, are used to group um, approaches to theology. So we've got a set of, no, we, you know, we've, we've, we, we have got, um, uh, it's, it's a set of materials that, um, uh, speaks of particular community uh, 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 accountabilities, both um, in terms of geographical context and in terms of other other, other identities. Um, we've got um, uh, and in, oh, including, of course, very very significantly confessional identities um, and, and, and kind of cross confessional identities like um, evangelical theology or Pentecostal theology, this kind of thing. Um, we've got um, material which I'm really pleased about and excited about um, that uh, directly addresses theological engagement with uh, some of the huge 21st century questions. We have our theology and race theology and capitalism theology and the environmental crisis, so on and so forth. Um, and, um, and, 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 and we have uh, you know, an increased body of material both on, on interreligious conversation in theology and, and on um, um, forms of interdisciplinary engagement, engagement with the arts and sciences, right? So, this, which is which is um, explicitly thematizing a kinds of kinds of border border crossings, right? Um, I, I, and yeah, I mean, I, I, I think I think there's a real risk which I'm aware of in, and 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 it is very apparent in the succession of um, books of the the. Christian theology since 1918, which is a great way to set it up. On the other hand, people just keep on writing more theology. It's really annoying. So your books have to keep getting bigger. <laughs> and the, 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 there is there is a, a, a noticeable diversification and expansion, which is the thing I'm talking about about here. So partly what you see what you're seeing there is is a 
a field that grows and then I suppose part of what I, but the questions I was asking myself in writing this paper is how does all of this talk to each other, you know, how, do, how does one avoid, it's, my, the big question for me is actually more how do you avoid, you know, each of the chapters in a book which has got your, you know, here is Korean theology, here is um, uh, Eastern Orthodox theology, here is... Um, you know, th 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 theology in dialogue with Hinduism or whatever. How, how do you avoid those simply just becoming self-contained um, 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 practices that only, that only talk to themselves? So it's, it's, so it's, so it's actually what's, cross, what's cross-cutting in the book that I'm most interested in and bothered about at this, at this point, which I think, I think is the interesting, almost reversal from the, what one might see, and I'm not, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not by no means confident I've got this, but what one might see in the fight situation, which is more the kind of rather strong recognition of a, of a shared challenge, well, you know, by a particular subset of theologians, but it's still a genuine shared challenge, of how do we all between us navigate this modernity that we've all ended up in, right? Um, and and, and that's, the, that's the polarization, that's the domain, right? And, and so you could say it's a move, you could say, you could say if you wanted, that it's a move from, the post, from a modern to a postmodern kind of, kind, of, kind, of, kind of approach to, 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 to the di and the question about what kind of diagramming um, is, 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 is required. But I'm not, I'm not totally sure I want to go there because I only just thought of that the moment I said it, so it's probably wrong, but it's past midnight. Yeah, give me a chance. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys.